On episode 604 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Hedva Bernholtz levy and discuss her book, Maybe It's Your Medications, How to Avoid Unnecessary Drug Therapy and Adverse Drug Reactions. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 604. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. Each week, we dive deep into health and fitness topics that affect those of us over 40. I'm Coach Allen. I'm an NASM certified personal trainer with specializations in corrective exercise, behavior change, performance enhancement, and fitness nutrition. A Precision Nutrition Level 1 coach, a FAI Certified Functional Ageling Specialist, and an OTA Level 2 Online Trainer. Each week, I'm joined by our co-host, Coach Rachel. She is an NASM Certified Personal Trainer and a RRCA Level 1 Run Coach. Let us be your coaches as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Hey, Raz. How are things? Good, Alan. How are you today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. We're getting closer to my vacation. Yay. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and so a couple of big things. One, one is I won't be taking new clients during September. So mm-hmm. today's the 22nd. You got about a week. If you go to 40plusfitness.com forward slash discovery, you can book a call with me and we can go ahead and get you going. If you don't hit me this week, then I'm going to be closed for September. I'll still service my existing clients. I'll still do the podcast. And I got a special little surprise I'm going to talk about in a minute uh, that I am going to do. But I'm not going to take on new clients during that period of time. So if you're not in the door before I get on the ferry to leave this island on September 1st, I can't talk to you. I won't bring you on until October, <laughs> probably October 2nd, based on what my wife has shown me my um, itinerary is because she's she's doing all that. I'm just tagging along. <laughs> nice. That sounds <laughs> but, awesome. So so if you want to work with me, this is the time. You could email me or you can go into 40plusfitness.com forward slash discovery. That's a direct link to my calendar. Literally, you see days on there that are available to book. That's the days I'm available to book. So go check it out. Also, I'm going to do something a little fun in September. Mm. Okay. I want to play health and fitness bingo. Oh, boy. (laughs) Okay. So I'm going to roll out the first and of hopefully many 40 plus fitness bingo games. Okay. And the way we're going to play this is it's going to be in the Facebook group. But you can go to 40plusfitness.com forward slash bingo to get the details. But you basically will get a bingo card with some health and fitness activities that you can do during the month of September. So it's going to run for 30 days. There's three levels of game and prizes at each level. It'll be drawn off of people who complete that level. So there's going to be, the, of course, the straight line, the way you normally play bingo. There's Mm going to be the X. The middle space is a free space. And Mm -hmm. then there's also going to be a blackout. And so the prizes will be relative to how far you make it through your bingo card of whether (laughs) you get a line, an X, or a blackout. And I'll have some prizes available for that. And we'll we'll finish that up in September. So just a little heads up, there are 25 squares in a bingo card, and there are 30 days in September. (laughs) Oh, cool. <laughs> this sounds so fun. So, this isn't like you're going to be have to do this stuff all the time, but the, the rule is it's one per day. So you can't fill multiple oh. squares in the same day. Cool. So this isn't okay. like a go out there one week and just bust all this stuff out and say, well, yeah, of course I got my protein and I had 30 grams of protein on this day. I'll check both. That's not mm-hmm. how it works. You know, you've got each day you score something on the card. And this is based on an honor system, but it still can be fun because sure. there'll be things that you wouldn't maybe necessarily have really focused on. So it's going to maybe take you outside your space a little bit. You know, you know, if you're not doing resistance training, you know there's going to be a square for resistance training. You absolutely know it's going to be in there. Um, awesome. If you're not moving much, if you're sedentary, yeah, there's going to be park your car 
at the back end of the parking lot instead of at cool. the front. And it's going to be the little things like that. But I think it's doable by just about everybody. But you can find your line. You can find your line. If you just can do a line, then that's great. Mm-hmm. It's better, maybe better than what we've done. Or an X or a lockout. But there'll be prizes involved. So I'm, I'm hoping to get cool. some folks involved. You can go to 40plusfitness.com forward slash bingo. Sounds awesome. <laughs> what a great challenge. Yeah. All right. Well, how are things up there, Rachel? Oh, wonderful. Getting ready for a camp out this weekend. We're taking the camper out to a, a park up here in Michigan and just looking for a weekend of peace and quiet getting away. Yeah. You, you got about another month and a half. Oh. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm losing time. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I got to be, I got to enjoy as much as I can outside before it starts snowing. Yeah. Not that I'll go not go outside because you know I do, but you yeah. will, but you won't be <laughs> <Yeah>. camping. <laughs> no. <laughs> yep. Now Mike will be ice fishing in a few oh, months. Oh, for sure. But yeah. <laughs> yep. But let's let's just wait. I'm not ready yeah. for summer to go away. <laughs> yeah. I'm not either. I'm not either. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, are you ready to have a conversation with Dr. Levy? Sure. Sounds great. Our guest today is founder of a community-based senior care pharmacy practice, a geriatric pharmacy specialist and educator. She has published numerous peer-reviewed journal articles and book chapters focused on optimizing drug therapy in older adults. She's a graduate of the University of Michigan. With no further ado, here's Dr. Hedva Berenholtz-Levy. Dr. Levy, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Thanks so much, Alan. Glad to be here. Now, the name of your book is Maybe It's Your Medications, How to Avoid Unnecessary Drug Therapy and Adverse Reactions. And I think everybody wants to avoid adverse reactions, but I like the word you used, therapy. Okay. Because this is not, we don't have a drug deficiency. This is meant to get us over a period of time when we can actually fix ourselves versus just deal with the symptoms. So I I love that you use the word therapy and I love that you use the concept of that health is a team sport. I think too many times we just think, well, there's the doctor, he's the coach and the quarterback. And, you know, I'm just doing my part. You know, I'm an offensive lineman. It's thankless. I just take my pills and I go on with my life. Right. (laughs) And it's a little bit more than that, right? Yes. So I definitely talk about the concept of your healthcare team. I think that's maybe an important thing just we could start off with that understanding. Of course, we think about the main players, the physicians, the pharmacists, the nurse, but there's occupational therapists, physical therapists. When I was ta- talking to a group of older adults, when someone mentioned the dentist, right? These are all part of our healthcare team. But the most important person on that team is, is you, the patient, the consumer, the one who's taking those medications. And I think all too often, people don't recognize that they are an important part of their team. They have a voice. And they're, they're actually in the, in the game, as you said, right? Using that analogy. So that's an important thing. And then if you start with that premise that I have a voice, my opinions matter, my preferences matter, what I'm experiencing when I take medications matter, then it's, you're at a different starting place, I think, with the drug therapy. And that's, um, you know, talk about that phrase again, too. <laughs> medication, we can talk about medications. We can talk about pharmacotherapy is another term for, for drug therapy. And I never really thought twice about it. So I appreciate you bringing that up. But it's drug therapy. It's another approach to managing our health. And it's one aspect of managing our overall health. And the link with healthy aging, I think, is so important, which is where this book came about. Too often, we continue taking medicines as we get older, and they may not be helping us age in the most healthy manner if they're unnecessary or causing problems. Now, I came from an accounting background. So when you give me a number and a list Someone called it a listicle once. But when you give me a list of things, that's like I'm kind of drawn to that. I, I kind of like that that idea of a list. And so you identified five characteristics that increase the risk of adverse drug events. And like I said, I think most of us want to avoid that. Can you talk about each of those briefly and why they're important? Yeah, sure. So I present these five characteristics as when you look at them together, it's kind of unique for the older adult population. And in medicine, we talk about age 65 and older is, is the, the cutoff of sorts. And so those five car- those five points, the first one is taking multiple medications, which would increase risk of having an adverse drug event. And that kind of makes sense. The more medicines you're exposed to, the greater the chances are of having a problem from them. Why does this happen? Lots of reasons. But one is we have more chronic conditions as we get older. And that leads to the need 
often for at least one medicine, but sometimes two or three, depending on the condition, right? We think about diabetes and even heart failure and, and other uh, conditions where you need several medicines. The other characteristic is, or the second characteristic is the involvement of multiple physicians in the care on, on your care team. So think about how our healthcare today is a little bit divided. We have specialists all over the place. The number of older adults who are seeing specialists has almost doubled in the last 20 years. So that's something to think about when physicians are prescribing their own medicines for you. Are they communicating with each other? Do those medicines interact? Does one physician know everything that you're taking? So that's where some of those other risk factors come in when you have more prescribers involved. And, in and, having, and having been, I worked in a pharmacy when I was in college. Okay. And, and I can tell you, the pharmacists back there, yeah, they've got the little computers, and but they are so slammed to just keep turning pills out because the retail environment is just, you know, they will, they will do a consult with you, but it's even hard for them if they're just seeing a script, unless the computer tells them there's a, a definite deal. But this goes even further to say, okay, because two doctors talking to each other, pharmacists looking at, you could get your stuff filled in the same place. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's being reviewed and covered off. So, and there's, there's some safeguards in place that I want to, yeah. you know, scare me, but it, Definitely, not all of the information is at the pharmacy system, and we can go into how to know what medication is the right cho choice, the right drug for a person. We have to have some of that medical information, the, the health background, which pharmacy systems don't have. So, yeah, that's another concern, right? We can only do so much checking at that community retail dispensing setting. So, clearly, the more doctors involved, studies have shown that there's an increased risk of having an adverse drug event occurring. The next two reasons kind of go together, and they're big words, but I do introduce them in the book. I think it's important for people to at least know these terms are there and then talk about them in, in more easy word with easier words, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. And this simply refers to pharmacokinetics is how our body handles medications. And as we get older, our body handles medications differently. Our kidney function changes, our liver function changes. And that impacts how our bodies process and get those medications out of our system. Some medications can have a much longer duration in the body because of these pharmacokinetic changes, if you will. So suddenly, as we get older, we might need lower doses. or We might need to avoid certain medications because our bodies are handling medicines differently. So that piece is another, that's a third characteristic that's really important. And then the fourth one I mentioned, pharmacodynamics, another big word, but that simply refers to how the drug affects our body. And the most simple way to address this for older adults to understand how our bodies change and deal with these medicines differently is our bodies are more sensitive to the effects of medications as we get older. And that's the pharmacodynamic piece. But that really means maybe smaller doses will, will be just as good for older adults. It means that there's certain drug classes that we might want to avoid as we get older because we're more susceptible to having a serious or more significant side effect like drowsiness, dizziness, that fall risk, things like that. And then the fifth characteristic I include is the fact that older adults are not enrolled in clinical trials as much as the younger population, those 60, under 65 years old. And that's because it's hard to study a drug, its effectiveness, if a person is taking many other medications and has many other health conditions. So it's not as clean, if you will. But we cannot know how a drug will affect an older person or an older person with different health conditions unless we study or have it exposed in, in someone with those conditions. So, so that means when a drug is newly available on the market after it's been approved by the FDA, we may, may or may not know exactly how the, the safety and effectiveness in an older individual. So those five characteristics, putting them together, kind of make that older adult a little more, more unique situation and at higher risk of having an adverse drug event. Yeah. And I think that's easy to see. There's, there's nothing inherently wrong with any one of these things. It's, it's just a part of the way the system works. They want to get a market, a drug to market quickly. If they can't get enough older adults in there, and one of the things I would say is it's probably chronological, chronological age, biological age, two different things. So you might not be 65, but you might be in a 65-year-old body. And so drugs would affect you. If, you're, if your liver or kidney is not functioning the way that it's supposed to, then you might have 
the wrong drug. You may have too much of the right drug and all that. So, you know, I think one of the keys to me is if you start a new drug, you need to have that conversation is to know, okay, what does this drug do? Why is this doing it? What are the potential risks? Because there are no wholly safe, <laughs> fully effective Correct. drugs out there. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Something could go wrong. And in fact, it goes wrong a lot more often than we would hope. Yeah. And you let you listed the stats in the book, which again is it's scary stuff. If you're on multiple medications, it, it is something that you definitely want to pay attention to. And you identified that as, as medical related problems or MRPs. So we won't keep, right. keep saying mm-hmm. medical related or problems. Related. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, poor Francis in your book, she she exhibited <laughs> she exhibited all eight of these. Well, you had to make a good example, but you know, it wasn't too far too not too far of a stretch though, Alan. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. So Frances, Frances had it rough. And as she went through her evaluation, and we're going to talk about the this evaluation process later. But as Frances went through it, she hit on all eight of these things. Like I said, I love lists, but poor Frances, can you talk through the eight MRPs that you could deal with when you're dealing with medications? Yeah. And so I introduced those MRPs not to make it more convoluted or complicated, but to help individuals understand that there's a lot to look at when helping a person look at their full medication regimen and is everything appropriate in helping them. And the goal is to minimize the risk of harm, obviously. So the MRPs that I, I talk about it, and so this is like a standard way I would do a medication review. I think most pharmacists would take this general approach. The first type is is the adverse drug reactions, right? So very obviously linked to medications have side effects, adverse drug reactions, it's kind of the same name. And so we have to look for, is a person experiencing any adverse drug reactions or side effects at the time? Drug interactions is another important medication-related problem. So, and also with this, we have to remember to always looking for um, not just prescription drug interactions, but also the non-prescription medicines a person might take. Don't forget the over-the-counter medications as well as the dietary supplements. And I also talk, I would go into a little more detail in one of the chapters about interactions, how drugs can interact with disease states, a person's health condition. So we need to be careful if someone who's taking a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, if they have heart failure or high blood pressure, can worsen those conditions. We look at dosages, doses that are too low or too high. As we talked about, doses can be too high. So we worry about that for our older adults, especially if there's kidney issues, liver problems, for example. But another, something that can be overlooked is a dose too low. So another important consideration we should have with the medications we're taking is, is it effective? Is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? And if not, is it because there's a dosage issue? So if we're going to treat high blood pressure or treat high cholesterol, let's make sure we're at a correct and effective dose that the drug is going to work for the person. So those are the two kind of partner problems, too high, too high and too low. A fifth medication-related problem is the selection of improper drug. And this is, a, I spend more time in a couple chapters in the, in the book on this topic because as we get older, geriatric experts have identified a list of medications that are considered potentially inappropriate for older adults. And I do emphasize the potentially part because everybody is different. But it just brings to mind that as we get older, again, because of those changes I mentioned earlier, the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, medicines may not be the best, certain medicines may not be the best choice as we get older. Another problem is an undertreated or untreated condition. So that's just as serious. It's serious if someone has a condition that really does need medical care and we're not, they're not getting it, that can lead to further problems. So, Anything from, you know, maybe it's an, an undiagnosed respiratory infection. If someone's treating a cough, it really becomes becoming something more serious. Or what seems, sounds, seems, feels like reflex of stomach issue, maybe it's a heart issue. I know you talked about that on a recent episode. So we want to make sure that nothing is being missed. Osteoporosis, the weakened bones. Are we, is a person getting enough calcium and vitamin D, for example? Not getting a medication. That's another, again, a whole chapter is devoted to someone not getting a medication for various reasons. Maybe they're not taking it the way they should be taking it at home. Maybe they can't afford it and they never filled the prescription or they stopped filling it. Maybe they didn't fully understand when and how to take it. So they're just not taking it properly. And then the, the last one is the unnecessary medications. And that's a really big concern in healthcare today and working with older adults because we have these growing medication lists. 
And is everything still needed? So that's a, a really big topic we can talk about too. But yeah. those are the eight problems. So, And, you know, I think, the, again, the, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this in particular is that this kind of shows you the complexity of the model. You know, you got the, the number of medications, what they do, what the risks are, and then all of these little kind of caveats of, are you getting enough? Are you getting the right thing? Are you actually taking it the right way? Are you taking it regularly enough? You know, are you now kind of making decisions? You talked about a patient who said, okay, this is too much. So instead of going and having the dose brought down, she's like, I'll take it every other day. And her condition didn't improve. So the doctor gave her another medication. And then she decided, well, I don't want to take this the same day I'm taking that one. Again, not what, it, what not, not how it was prescribed. And every other day she's taking that one. Again, the condition doesn't improve. So the doctor's like, well, we got to put you on a third blood pressure medication. And now they're on three blood pressure medications where perhaps if they just asked the doctor to lower the dose of the first one to the appropriate dose, that wouldn't happen. But that's hard. And add to the complexity, you're listening to this podcast. So if you've made substantial lifestyle changes, some of the medications you may have been on you may no longer need. You know, a lot of people have high blood sugar, high blood pressure. They start eating better. They start moving better. Their blood pressure comes down naturally. Their blood sugar comes down naturally, but they're still on the same dose of those medications. Your blood pressure might go too low. Your blood sugar might go too low. And now you're going into the doctor. Why is your blood sugar too low? And it's like, I don't know. And so now they're putting on a third medication. But, <laughs> and you may you're nailing a really important point or I've fallen. I don't know. You know, I've had these experiences of falling in the past month. Doctor, what's going on? And you find out the blood pressure has been dropping too low. So that de-intensifying therapy and what you're, you're bringing up the topic of communication, which I sprinkle throughout the book because we, it's so important for us as consumers to communicate with our healthcare team, with our physicians, not, you know, may not, may or may not, she may or may not have been on the, the right dose, but she wasn't feeling right. She didn't, or she didn't like it. She needed to say something to her doctor rather than go on silently and tolerating whatever she thinks she's doing, making her own adjustments. But yeah, there's a woman mentioned I, the book. The other thing, the other thing is so people will go to the doctor, they'll get a prescription. The condition will not improve. Yep, and they'll just continue right. to take what they were told to take, even though the stomach isn't better. You know, this isn't better. They don't feel better. Right. Or pain not improving or something like yeah. that, right? So is it the way I'm, the person is taking it? Is it the dosage too low, perhaps? Is it maybe just the wrong medicine for the person? But yeah, to continue, that's the, where we get into these unnecessary medicines. And for people to think it's been approved by the FDA, my doctor's prescribing it, there's absolutely no risk, I think is just misleading for us. And we fall into that complacency. We just get comfortable with the medicines. I just, I think we need to be a little bit more vigilant. Not to doubt all the medicines, but just to make sure, do I need it? Because ideally we want that, that's that fine line of taking just what you need that's helping you and avoiding what is not helping you. But you make a great point about people who are making lifestyle changes and improving their blood pressure, blood sugar control, all that wonderful stuff. The medicines might be over a higher, too, too high yeah. a dose at that point, right? At least letting your doctor know that you're making these lifestyle changes and therefore, you know, they'll know, okay, well, you may have to lower this drug, measure your blood sugar, measure your blood pressure. Let's see where it's trailing. If it starts to go low, call in and we'll lower the dosage on your medication. Yeah, so that's part of that monitoring. And there's so much we can do at home. And that's, again, being on the healthcare team, help your doctor monitor, do what you need to at home, check the blood pressure. If you have the blood sugar monitoring, you know, do what you need to do and make sure you're talking with your doctor about those results. Now, one of the things about that team is that this is, I'm not going to call it rocket science, but <laughs> the biology of medications, particularly when they're combined and as we age, is very, very confusing, can be really confusing and really maybe above our head. And it's okay. It's okay to admit that this is above my head. I don't have all the answers. But there is a, a kind of a solution out there, I think, if we search for it, we find we can find it. But getting a comprehensive medication review by a professional that does these things, particularly for older adults, can be a valuable thing. Because the other things you brought up in the book that we haven't even touched on are things like over-the-counter drugs, the supplements we might be taking, 
our dietary changes, changes in the way we feel or look, you know, if you've lost significant weight, if you're not moving as much as you were. So sometimes lifestyle is going in the opposite direction of what you we're doing. I mean, sometimes it's just you're losing, you're losing bone mass, you're losing muscle mass, and it might be one of the drugs you're taking that's causing some of that to happen. Can you talk a little bit about the comprehensive medical review, what would be involved, and then how we would go about the process of deprescribing? Because I, I think a lot of people think, well, I'll just quit a medication. And sometimes that creates more problems than the medication did. So you can kind of talk about that because I don't think this is something where you just make the decision, I'm going to take this every other day because I'm not feeling good on it. Can you talk about that review and how it would go? Yeah, sure. So I think the most valuable tool is to have a medication review. And like you mentioned, it needs to be by somebody who knows the drug therapy, who knows the medications. And for the older population, which is where my focus is, It's going to be someone with that geriatric specialist, geriatric specialty. And uh, like pharmacists have that specialty, geriatricians or the physicians who are specialized in geriatrics, but nurse practitioners and physician's assistants can also have that geriatric specialty. So the medication review is that, is that, is a chance to look at everything a person is taking. And as you, you touched on, thank you for mentioning it, the over the counter, the OTC products things like antacids and even aspirin. A lot of people don't think about aspirin being on their regimen because they get it without a prescription, right? So I've come across that all the time. To other pain medicines, cough and cold preps, anything you might be taking without a prescription is important to be included in that medicine list for the review, as well as the dietary supplements. And dietary supplements is a whole other ballgame. I think it's just important to mention that they're regulated as food by the Food and Drug Administration, not as medication. So there's a whole other little ball of concern we have with the supplements. But a medication review is a chance for that medication expert to look at everything you're taking and look for all of those eight medication-related problems that I mentioned earlier and identify not only actual problems, what I do a lot is looking for potential problems. Because if we can prevent something from happening, then we prevent the additional doctor visit, the added prescription, the emergency department visit, or even a hospitalization, right? So all those statistics that we know go with having an adverse event with medication, we want to prevent it, right? So a lot of people might say, I'm doing fine right now. I'm taking what the doctor has told me to take. There still are things to find. When you open up the lift the hood and you look, look under the hood of the car, you can find some of those eight problems. And things like very hard, it's very hard to identify without talking with a person and doing reviews, finding out how they're taking their medicines at home and looking for the under treatment issue. And are they even getting their drug their drugs and taking them the way they they should be taken? So, you know, where you go about finding a review is is the challenging part. And I touch on as best I can. I truly believe pharmacists have the therapy. So I always encourage people to find a pharmacist who can do this type of review. And if you're enrolled in Medicaid, Medicare Part D, there is a comprehensive review that is part of that program. I just cannot say universally. These are the criteria of who's going to qualify. I encourage people to call their Part D plan to find out if they qualify. And then there's, you know, senior care pharmacists out across the country who do this on a private basis kind of thing as well. So does that answer anything else you want to touch on with the medication review? Because I I think the, the situation is, you know, the doctor, he gets maybe seven, eight minutes with you and he's looking at your medicine list. So he knows what you're taking but he's got to make some decisions and he's not necessarily going to ask you or tell you how to take this medication. Now you go to the pharmacy and you get your prescription filled. They may give you information or maybe a booklet or something and that you didn't read. It's like, Oh, everyone knows how to use an inhaler. Or everyone knows how to use eye drops. <laughs> no, no, no. Sometimes. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so, so it's just those concepts of let's talk about it. Let's set up a plan Find the right teammate to come in and help you complete this so that you're in it. And I think you recommended, if you can, and and it works for you, to try to get this done about once a year because your medications may change in that time. Your lifestyle might change. And, well, sorry, we're one year older. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. It's just it's like the the regular tune-up. You just want to make sure. And with a little luck, maybe some medicines are no longer needed and, and those can be removed. Yeah, you save that copay and you can hire a coach. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that lifestyle just, yeah, there's so much we can do to be looking at the full picture, right? So it's not just the medications. It, that's 
one piece of this puzzle of how to age healthy and and right taking care of ourselves is such an important part. And you kind of t- touched on it with the with the uh, the physician doesn't have a lot of time. Pharmacists are the most accessible healthcare profession. We're there. Unfortunately, yes, pharmacies look very busy these days. But I also will continue to say that pharmacists are trained to communicate and educate about drug therapy. This is what we love to do. So if you and they have that little they, kiosk or the little booth thing, you over the other window away the, from everybody, you con- can have that private right, conversation. Consultations <laughs> over there, right? And I'd like to see them use more. We have our healthcare system has has we can stand to have some improvements, but pharmacists do have the skill and this interest. So I would always tell people, don't be so intimidated. Ask if the pharmacist has time. For sure, when you pick up a prescription and and you are asked, do you want to have any questions with a pharmacist? How many people ever say yes? Very, no, we're, very. We're in a hurry to grab that bag. Give them our credit card there. and walk right. out. Of- <laughs> yeah, gotta go grab something else. There's sick people leave. at this pharmacy. There's sick people at this pharmacy. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to stay. But I encourage people, you know, say yes. Try saying yes and talk with a pharmacist. You never, you don't know what you don't know is another important theme, I think. But if the pharmacist is busy, then find another time when they can speak with you. He or she can talk to you about your medications. To do a more thorough review, probably they can't do that on the spot. You're going to have to set aside a separate time. And I'm hoping pharmacy will keep continue to evolve where we do have more time with the patient to do what we call primary care, to go through these medications to help people understand their drug therapy and identify problems. So when I do my work, I'm any potential or actual problems I find, I'm communicating with the patient's physician because that's where the changes can get made. We Pharmacists can't prescribe. It's the physicians that do that. And that brings us to maybe the deprescribing considerations. That's okay. So as you said, just stopping something on your own can be very scary. Of course, you hear a lot of people say they did it and everything's okay. And you're like, phew, by the grace of God, it was fine. Things can happen. Yeah, a lot of so, people jump out of airplanes and don't die. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. It depends on what risk you want to take, yeah. right? But your health is a lot of So with the deprescribing, so this is a new, fairly new term that has taken hold in the medical world because, and I, I have a love-hate relationship with the term initially. I view deprescribing, by definition, deprescribing means reducing or eliminating drug therapy when, when appropriate. And I've been arguing for 25 years, that's what I do. I review the medications, I identify ways to optimize drug therapy. What can we remove? Where's the dose too high? What is still necessary? Is the person taking it correctly? So I try to clean up the medication list for a person with their physician. The deprescribing movement, though, is relevant because we have to name it to be able to talk about it. We do need some research about deprescribing because when it comes down to, is it safe to stop a certain medicine and how do we stop it? Can it be stopped cold turkey? Does it need to be tapered? In a person with these conditions, is it okay to stop it? What are the risks of the problem recurring if you stop it? We don't have all of that science, right? So that's where deprescribing as a science needs a name and needs that attention. So we do have a lot of research going on in this deep prescribing area. When we bring it down to the individual, it means, like I said, as we talked about that medication review, finding what may might look like a medicine that may no longer be needed. Then we have to have the conversation, looking at all the health information, how stable is the disease or the health condition, uh, what are the patient's preferences? That's a really important piece. What matters most to the individual? taking fewer medicines, or maybe they want to prevent something in the future from happening. And sometimes some of our medicines are prevention, right? Are you willing to risk possible side effects now to prevent a heart disease or something later on? Or are you more concerned about how you're doing right you know, today? There's some interesting studies that have looked at even like with sleep. Do you need immediate sleep relief? That Taking care of that symptom right now is most important. Or are you willing to um, you understand the risks of some of those medicines and you'd rather figure out the the harder way to, to improve your sleep, right? The sleep hygiene and and other factors that might help. So there is a lot that goes into deep prescribing. And then we come down to, okay, if a medicine is, if it is agreed upon that we will stop a medicine, typically in general, it's safer to slowly lower that dose, but patients need to be educated. So if you're going to slowly reduce a dose, what symptoms might you be looking for in yourself or your mom or dad, you know, whoever's involved? And what do you do should they return, right? Those symptoms come back. So that part of that educational piece needs to be part of that deep prescribing, if you will. Other 
I didn't want to make sure I cover it. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that, that's why I think this book is so valuable is this is really a good primer for you if you're if you're dealing with a lot of medications or if you know someone who is, because let's face it, what 10,000 people are turning 65 or older every month, I think you said. And so most of us are, we're going to turn 65 and we're going to be in that age group. And so the medications we start taking today don't necessarily have to be the medications we're taking and probably shouldn't necessarily be the dosage and medications we're taking then. So getting ahead of the curve and understanding what we're on now and understanding what it's for and how we feel and is it helping us. And so I think there's just a lot of opportunities there for us to not nip this in the bud, but be on more solid footing as we age to make sure that we're doing the right things and our, our team is there supporting us and helping us do the right things too. Yeah. And I, I want to say, I think this is just statistic is even 10,000 per day or turning oh, per day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or turning 65. We have millions yeah. and millions of uh, these baby boomers are these all, we're all, we're all there or almost there are turning 65. So those numbers are upon us and that puts more strain on the healthcare workforce, right. To manage these older adults and that, that geriatric specialty, unfortunately, there's not enough of us trained in geriatrics to fully know these nuances about the drug therapy, which makes it even more important that you kind of stay on top of it. And the book, it, yes, it has a lot of information and it doesn't always have like the fix, but it point is to ask the questions, to empower you to feel confident that I do need to ask questions about the medications and I'm entitled to ask those questions. And these are the questions I can be asking, at least start the conversation, right? Hmm. So, Dr. Levy, I define wellness as being the healthiest, fittest, and happiest you can be. What are three strategies or tactics to get and stay well? And I take I, one thing that's really important that I, I always focus on is, is what, what matters most to the patient. So that, that happiest, and, and it's, so to, it's, a, it's a very subjective thing of what a wellness and where you are. You know, where are you on that, on that to the realm of possibility? So I love the question. And the three things I came up with would be one adherence. So that's another term I bring up in my book, but it's it's taking the medications as instructed. If you're going to, if you're prescribed a medicine, your doctor has identified a condition that can be treated with this medication, make sure you're taking it correctly. So that means if you have side effects or, or cost issues, or maybe you just even, you don't quite believe in the medication. So those, those health beliefs matter. You need to communicate with your physician about the medication, but if, you're, if you have medications, take them as instructed. Don't take them here or there when you feel like it. So that's an important piece. The other piece, which is uh, I talk about a lot in that book, is minim in the book is minimizing the unnecessary medications. Right. So wellness is when you're trying to be your best and feel your best. You don't want the drowsiness or or the risk of a fall or other issues that is common side effects or stomach issues or whatever it might be. So. Minimize unnecessary medicines and take only what's really needed and helpful. And the third thing I think is the third strategy I think is really important is that self advocacy. Speak up for your how you feel day to day, concerns you have, and when you're when it's going great. I mean that's something important to share too. This feels right. This medication I think is important to me. That's an important piece to share also. But how you feel day to day. I, I use the analogy of the chain. The healthcare is a link chain, if you will. And you are the end of that chain. So you have the physician, the nurses, the pharmacist, but you ultimately are at the end of that chain, knowing how you feel every day, how those medicines may are affecting you, good or bad. If you notice something different, you need to say something about it. Maybe it's medications, which I mean, that title came after many year, years, a couple of years of using another title. I came to that title very last minute, but maybe it's your medications. You need to talk about it. Thank you. Dr. Levy, if I were to send someone to learn more about you and learn more about the book, maybe it's your medications, where would you like for me to send them? My website for the book is maybeitsyourmeds.com. And there you have links to my blog as well as to and for more information about the book and myself. Cool. You can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 604 and I'll have the links there. Dr. Levy, thank you so much for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Alan. Welcome back, Raz. Alan, oh my gosh. I loved it. Starting with the title, Maybe It's Your Medications. I love that title so much. 
I mean, some there are time and a place. There is a time and a place we where we need something. We need some medications, but sometimes it's like opening Pandora's box. There's a lot that can go sideways, whether you intend it to or not. Yeah, I was um, it's on Twitter a couple of days ago, and there was a health and fitness influencer. She mm-hmm. likes to be called an influencer. I just want to help people, but she's an influencer. And so she went on this little uh, live rant, you know, because that's what you do now is you find something to be just up in arms about. And you mm-hmm. you rant about it on, on social media. Well, her rant was that she had been using this birth control pill for years consistently. So she wouldn't have a period because her doctor said that's the way you can do it. So you don't get pregnant, very low likelihood you get pregnant, and mm-hmm. you don't have periods. So she's been taking this stuff consistently for years. And then mm-hmm. she's ranting because now she's finding out that there is a side effect to this medication mm-hmm. that includes cancer. Oh, my goodness. And so her rant was, well, my doctor never told me. Oh, my doctor never told me that there was a side effect of cancer. Oh, my gosh. And I'm thinking there's a little piece of paper in the box. Mm-hmm. You fill that prescription. If you're going to be taking it consistently and skipping the little uh, sugar pills or whatever they use now for the little pills that are in there that you're you know supposed to take. Consi- I don't know. I, I haven't had a person that needed <laughs> yes. birth control in a couple decades, but it used to be these yes. little foil pack things and you yes. took one every day and there was a couple of them that were basically, they said sure. sugar pills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm thinking now maybe they've moved away from the sugar pills, but Probably, it's still the pills. But yeah. but <laughs> Inert. Yeah. Please. Um, but she was upset with was because no, she's probably getting three or four of these at one time just to mm-hmm. keep her going for a few months. And then she'd go and get it filled again. And there'd be a little piece of paper in that box. And mm-hmm. that piece, little piece of paper would never get unfolded. It would never get read mm-hmm. and it would never be understood. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, every medication you take, even most supplements yeah. have potential side effects. Mm-hmm. And so if you're taking something you really need to know the, the core three things. Why am I taking this? Mm-hmm. What's the possible downside and the risks associated, particularly for someone in my condition or my age or whatever? And then three, how do I take it properly? Oh, my gosh. That's a big one right there. Yeah. <laughs> taking it properly. Well, it, it seems like a simple thing. you know. Take it a does. Pill. But sometimes but it's, it's not. A take with food. So yeah. if you're taking four or five or 15 medications and mm-hmm. eight of them are with food and three of them are not, and some are in the morning and some are in the evening, you know, you need to math something, you need a box. Yes. Or, I don't even know. <laughs> no. you know yes. Google, maybe, maybe that's something Google yeah. would be really good at is, okay, mm-hmm. Google, I want these alarms each day at this time and remind me, I got to take these with food and that. And maybe yeah. AI can do that stuff where you're just sending you a message mm-hmm. or text and saying, hey, it's time for you to take your glaucoma medicine or whatever. But there's it's just one of those things where you know you have to you have to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it because mm-hmm. you're the CEO. Right. And if you've taken a medication and you didn't know the side effects, mm-hmm. that's a problem. If you're taking a medication and don't know how to take it and beyond mm-hmm. knowing how to take it, uh, the question comes up, okay, so so yes, you know you know how to use your inhaler. Mm-hmm. You have asthma and you know how to take use your inhaler, but can mm-hmm. you do it when you're stressed? Can you yeah. do it when you're kind of freaking out because you're having an attack and now you had uh-huh. to go back into the kitchen, you're mm-hmm. having difficulties and you grab it out of the counter and you're trying to take it and, you know, mm-hmm. can you do it properly when you're in that stressed situation? So it's just, right. you know, and we talked a little bit about this, you know, yes, you want to work with your doctor. Yes. They're mm-hmm. part of your care team, Yes, but you've got to do those three core things right. Well, it's important. Alan, I just started taking thyroid medicine for hypothyroidism, part of my menopause journey. And this is the first time that I've had to take a medicine without having an illness. Like I've taken antibiotics before, but this is a full time, probably for a very long time medicine that I got to take. And so my doctor gave me some information. But when I got home, I did read that little tiny piece of paper that comes in my in my pillbox. 
And I actually learned some things that um, my doctor did not fill me in on. So for if, if anyone's not taking a thyroid medicine, you actually have to take it on an empty stomach, FYI. You can't just take it willy-nilly at any time of the day when you feel like re- you just remember to take it, taking it. And then I've also learned too that there's certain foods that will make it less absorbable. So I take it on an empty stomach. You have to wait 30 minutes before you can even eat anything. And then there's some f- foods that you shouldn't be eating you shouldn't be taking an iron supplement at the same time. You should not be having walnuts and and some other random food items. So I did all that research. I did all that little fine print reading to figure out I need this thyroid medicine to work. That's my A goal. So I want to do everything I can to not sabotage that by eating the wrong things at the wrong time. But I can only imagine with blood pressure medicine, heart medicine, diabetes medicine, like there's got to be a ton of rules for all these other things. Yeah. And then the other side of it is what happens if there's a change in you? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're listening to this podcast. And so I'm going to go on the general assumption that you want to improve your lifestyle and live a long, healthy life. So let's say you lose 30 pounds. Mm-hmm. What does that change? Because, you know, some medication doses are based on how big a human you are. Weight. Yes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And so if you lose some weight and now, you know, do you need the same medications? And so it's even, it's worth going to even just go to the pharmacist, go to the counter, you know, they've got Mm -hmm. the little quiet little booth over there. It's kind of private. You can go there and say, Hey, you know, I'm just curious. I've done a little bit of reading, but I weigh 30 pounds less than I did Mm -hmm. when these medications were prescribed. Mm Mm-hmm. Should I be taking the same amount? Yeah. If I weigh 30 pounds or 60 pounds less. That's a big you know, difference. Yeah. You tell your doctor, hey, I'm going to go low carb or basically say I'm going to cut out sugar. How should I manage my medication mm-hmm. when I start reducing the sugar that I'm eating? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. what I don't want to do is have my blood my blood sugar go too low. And now what am I doing? I'm drinking orange juice or soda just to make it all work. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? And oh. so it's it's one of those things is just you need to know why. You need to know what the risks are and you need to know mm-hmm. how. And yeah. that's, you know, that's most of what this book is. But she has a lot of great information in there. Mm-hmm. How to approach your doctor, how to have these conversations, how mm-hmm. to get one of those uh, reviews done. Yeah. It's, you know, one, one point I want to make really quick, Ellen, is that we rely on our doctors to tell us all of this information about the medicines we should be taking and how to take them. But I want to remind people that all of the doctors that we go to may not always be on the same page. So for example, if you're going to a cardiologist and he has you on a blood pressure reducing medicine, And then you go to your general practitioner and she sees that your blood pressure has dropped so low that she puts you on a different blood pressure medicine to get it back up to normal. Obviously, it's a contradiction there. So, you know, just I want to point out that you need to make sure that you're all of the doctors that you see are fully aware of all of the medicines that you take so that they're not counteracting what each of them are trying to achieve with helping your health. And that's That's one of the things. Well, that's one of the things Dr. Levy got into was she Mm -hmm. said, you know, if your kidney's not functioning very well, Mm -hmm. and then because your blood pressure, your doctor puts you on a diuretic, Mm -hmm. I think you can see there might be a problem there. (laughs) Your doctor knows that you have some kidney issues. Mm -hmm. You need to, you need it. So, you know, I would, at this point, I'm not on any medications at all. I, I did take a aspirin the other day because i had a headache but um Mm -hmm. you know that's that's yeah it's the only thing i can remember taking in i don't know three or four years (laughs) was maybe (laughs) maybe a little bit of aspirin here and there but if i were on multiple medications when i went into my any doctor any doctor i walked into i would have that piece of paper yeah and i would say okay here you can put this in my record if you need to but i Mm -hmm. want him to be able to pull it out when we're having i got a copy here maybe but just Mm -hmm. here's here's a list of everything i'm taking Here's when Mm -hmm. I'm taking it. Here's how much I'm taking. So I want you to have a complete transparency and then any issues that are going on. You know, I've I've Mm -hmm. lost 30 pounds. I've gained 30 pounds. My hair's falling out. You know, Mm -hmm. other things are going on in my body. And if the doctor tells you, well, that's just getting old, I would (laughs) probably go find another doctor. But yes, please. uh, (laughs) (laughs) But have conversations. You know, they're, 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 yes, they'll give you seven to eight minutes. Mm hmm. But be ready. That's the only, if you just sit there and listen to him for eight minutes, 
you're not going to learn everything that you need to know. Yeah. So and neither are they. You right. need to tell your doctor what's going on. You need to keep them 100% informed with what's going on so that they can treat you properly. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. I love this book. It could be your medication. <laughs> it's, 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 it's definitely, well, it is. It's, and it's definitely the right conversation to have, you know, because mm-hmm. your pharmacist and even your, your pharmacist will take more time, but your doctor just isn't given enough time. You know, I talked about that last week with the urologist, Dr. Boone, mm-hmm. they're just not given enough time to really tell you everything they want to tell right. you or should tell For you. Sure. And so you have to be an advocate. You have to ask the right questions. And absolutely, this book yep. can be a good start to that. Super helpful. Yep. All right. Well, I'll talk to you next week. Great. Take care, Ellen. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we discuss the nine things to drop from your life today for better health and fitness over 40. Until then, have a happy and healthy week.